Could you even be still growing hydro in 2023? Come on, you know? Two ah. months left. What about 2024? Well, is hydro still a thing? Hang on a second. And I'm just poking oh, fun. You... <laughs> it is still a thing. I have... Guys, we're going to talk some hydro today. God, he may be a little yin and yang here. Good cop, bad cop. I have some pictures of the setup from D uh, DGC in here. Kicking ass in hydro. So uh, let's get into it. You had a, We had a post on newgrows.com that brought some of this to our attention. Yeah. yeah enough hydro. So. Well, we'll see. First off, even before we get into the post, what is hydro? What would you call hydroponics? Because it has to do with an inert media and then all the nutrient coming, all the nutrition coming from a liquid nutrient solution. That's where I, where I get so, what I get out of hydro, but an inert media. Quickly of that, then we have cocoa, rock wool, peat. Peat's borderline for me. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like that's not hydro, but it is because it's an inert media unless you get a peat. Once you put in worm castings, compost, or anything else, no more hydro. It's got to be inert, like yes. you're saying. Yes, yes, exactly, man. Hydro, I think of as leaning towards a sterile media, a sterile root environment. Uh, that that's what I think of with hydro. No microbes. Mm, I know what is doing out. Well, is uh, cocoa is in theoretically sterile. I mean, it's not none of these. So there's the cocoa, the uh, pro mix, you know, peat. None of those are really sterile because there's trichoderma all over the place here, man. There's bacteria. We'll get into it, man. What is sterile? I don't, I mean, what is sterile? That's a really hard one. How about I would spark you on this? Go to the grow question here sure. over from dudegrows.com. Do a little narration. Start the conversation. This is in from uh, Come on. Duck Kim. Duck, duck, duck Kim, yo. Man, smell duck this, man. Duck. Smell like Duck Kim, yo. <laughs> Organic sip to RDWC. I can see where this caught your attention. That sounds uh, like controversial, like working against it. Anyway, let's. Hey, real quick, as long, because they might not know, uh, organic sip is what I do with the bottom feeding buckets. I don't do organic, but a sip bucket slowly waking up the bottom. Deep water culture is like that. On Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Very simple. A little bit of water in the bottom. I don't know if you can quickly find a deep water culture or RDWC system on the flag Rambo. But it's very similar, except they put a lot more water in the buckets. They'll put six inches of water in the buckets. They'll even go higher in the beginning. Yeah, what do, yeah, there you go. And then they raise, they lower. Oh, look at that one. with that, That's a great example. That one with all the roots right there. Yeah. Uh, they take that take that water level and they slowly lower it down. They create this air gap of just perfect uh, perfect moisture uh, right in that center area, and you get those crazy beautiful roots. I don't know if there's any more aggressive growth system that I've ever worked with than a, a DWC system. But unfortunately, look at those roots real quick. Mm, these notes. Uh, yeah, there you go. But just there's nothing protecting them. That is bare root. Like I'm thinking of like bare wire going to a, you know my electric panel box. Mm. Theoretically, everything should be okay. <laughs> Theoretically. <laughs> All right, All here's right. the post here. It says, "Hello everyone. I have about eight years growing experience, growing organic living bed no-till craft blend and recharge. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking to nerd out, so I want to try recirculating deep water culture hydroponic system. I bought a grow wee pH controller and a doser." And four nutrient pumps have a good reverse, or a reverse osmosis filter on a float valve coming out at zero EC. I got a quarter horsepower chiller that gets 400 gallons per hour. I have two recirculating deep water culture sites that get 400 gallons per hour water pump each pumping from reservoir. This is where what? your head's hurting. No, I'm looking for a hat to take off to this gentleman. He's doing it right. I see exactly what they're doing, and they want to have some fun. They want to try to build a dragster. I'm trying to build me a Toyota Corolla. I know that gets me to work every day. They're trying to build a dragster, and you got it right. And if, if we're doing this, I mean, like I said, as far as growth goes, you'll get crazy growth. If you want a fun experiment, let's see what they're doing. You got a pH controller because you don't have all those microbes. So now you've got to really control your pH tight, which is not too big of a deal. But if, I remember I paid several hundred dollars for my pH well, closer. And it's just really water quick. Water volume. Just real quick, I just I just want to go over this. Four nutrient pumps. Those are pumps that sit in, I 
peristolic pumps, is that what they call them? They sit in your uh, each one of your bottles. So you've got the bottle, grow, micro, bloom, cow mag. Each one of those goes and just pumps a tiny bit of nutrient in. So it's very technical. Those nutrient dosers, and they remind me of like being in a hospital and seeing like hospital equipment. And then, by the way, so you got reverse osmosis at zero EC. You took everything out of that. So now you've got to put everything back in with your, hopefully your nutrients have all that. And a quarter horsepower chiller. And a chiller does 400 gallons per hour. Uh, chiller is really um, a big, really important. When you use uh, water to grow in, uh, there's a direct correlation with the amount of oxygen the water can hold and temperature. It goes right around 68, 70 degrees, you're getting a great amount of oxygen into that root zone. So that's why you buy a chiller, because naturally that water's not going to sit at 68 degrees. You keep a recirculating chiller. You keep some air stones in there. You have this crazy, cool, oxygenated water your roots are bathing in until the pump clogs or until one of the air stones clog or until the regenerative blower or you know breaks down or you know there's a lot of little things somebody kicked an air stone out man we used to have theoretically nice guy candy we'd have air stone cleaning day when you know when there were these 99 <laughs> 99 sites going on two big oh, air man. stones three inch air stones that we bought from aquatic eco we bought them from an aquarium store because the little ones break and they get clogged up. And we would just take 35% hydrogen peroxide. And we'd pull these things out. we put them in the bottom of a bucket. Put the peroxide in. Mm -hmm. And that's how we'd have to clean these things. Man, there was so much maintenance that went along with this system. Um, yeah, quite a bit. Now, air stones have actually come a long way. I don't know. Some air stones, depending on you know, the nutrient nutrient concentration with the salt and stuff i would eat away at them quicker and like you're like damn i need these to, to last at least a few cycles but well, let me give a shout out to just to aquatic eco.com they are a uh fertilizer supply store so if you are trying to get uh, you know they'll do like for the uh fish stores and everything like that so if you're trying to eco yeah if you're trying to get really good oh man they must have changed business yeah air diffusers stoners stoners <laughs> hit, that. hit that one yeah you see how those this, they must have changed brands but sick, hit the the middle one over there yeah those are the type that i got and you can see they're i think they're glass i think they're made out of some kind of crushed glass is it a silica can there be yeah. a difference though i'm just thinking out loud as far as uh considering an aquatic environment versus a deep water culture environment for growing cannabis on yeah you know maybe what you're making airstone out of or Certainly yeah, different. The best thing you can do is make them out of silica so they can be cleaned. You know, it's like glass, basically, so it's really easy to clean. You soak them in some peroxide. But anyway, that's uh, I purged my information of what I know about deep water culture and uh, and air stones. So I hope it helps. Uh, I wanted to mention, don't think about hydro unless you have decent water volume. The smaller your hydro site, the more pH fluctuation you're going to have. Um, the more temperatures can swing into warmer areas as well. So try and have water volume, man. Like you want a decent res, like yeah. 40 gallons off the top of my head, at least if you're going out to different sites. Um, some setups are pretty simple. We used to sell the heck out of just on one end of the room, the ebb and flows. It's like your controller bucket, 50 gallon controller, and then your plant sites down the line and just ebbs and flows, floods on a timer. So they're easy. And then you're controlling the pH at one central site versus individual sites. Try to run hydroponics on individual sites that aren't tied together and circulating can be a pain in the butt. Oh my God. That's not no. much water volume. You get... uh -uh. I'm sorry, you uh, can't do that. that. And do re you have to recirculate. If you're doing hydroponics, you have to recirculate. And uh, unless you're doing, there's deep water culture. And I guess you could call what I'm doing with the real bucket, shallow water culture. Anytime you're doing deep water culture, uh, above two inches of water, you need circulation and you need aeration because you need cold temperatures, you know, in the sixties, you know, low seventies and plenty of, of circulation. Let me show you here the opposite of uh, just simplicity. This got me motivated. DGC. Um, yeah, Grambo, you're showing this video now. Beautiful. Kuzmas, Kuzmas, sorry, this is Canadian TDC. You tell me which one next time we talk. He starts from 1212. He has over 20 plants, and that reservoir holds 250 liters. I don't know. You do the math. We're Canadian. Holds a good amount of water volume. 
and the only thing you can play 60, the roots video of uh, who's most roots there grambo yeah. he has going on in there is just enough water bubbling so it bubbles up and hits the roots like no pumps going large water volume he's busy doing whatever not whatever actually works with uh, taking care of problem animals and ripping raccoons out of houses and bees and whatnot but he's like dude i can go away and leave this system for two weeks uh you know he uses as far as ph is staying stable for him he doesn't have to add water he's like maybe at the most aggressive point in veg i'll add some water and top off nutrient every two weeks and those uh he said as far as those plants scotty i noticed there's a lot in that system he starts at 12 12 and he only has about one to two top sites per plant like you know he prunes them all up sure really quick and one of his comments dutch table which I like, method if you grambo can you see if you can, i'm sorry to do this to you you're so good at dutch table method see if you can find that yeah man that'll be a little bit smaller probably but um he made a good point when you're starting from 12 12 he's like man it's just i i don't like just growing legs that's wrong some gardens some gardens you go into and depending on plant count and what you can do you'll see two feet two and a half three feet of just stalk and then the flowers and then the buds and it's like that's why i'm starting to encourage more growers to think about and i'm liking to go to a 12 12 quicker than i used to and maybe yeah. take some of that veg time out. You're going to start seeing a lot of stuff from like herb growers and all that best practices. And this is how you cut down on your veg. The reason why everyone doesn't do, it's called the Dutch table method. Uh, back in the day, they would take six inch Hugo blocks, six inch rock wool blocks, and they would just play some, I can't remember, four per square foot or something like that. They would just hit them six times a day, cyclical irrigation, uh, no hardly any space between the plants, and they would just be growing one central terminal bud. One bud. One, there's the Hugo blocks. There you go. See how close those are together? Even screwed that next one down, Graham. But yeah, check that out. That's a Dutch table method right there. No veg, and it's all just buds. God understands. We have plant counts. If they come in and, and hit you with a thousand plants. If I did that on my 20 lighters, geez, I'd be in jail for 20 years. It looks like if I got caught. It looks like a a router server. Like if you Uh, go to like some bank of again. Yeah. One single of those drippers that uh, clogs up. Man, you've got a lot of Achilles heels there. You've got a lot of fail points there. Now backing up to counter that simple hydro when I showed you from Kuzmas was just a reservoir. No connections, no pumps, and some good air movement done like that's a pretty simple little three inch i think net pass with some uh, i think it has hydrogen in there or whatever yeah pretty simple setup to to so you can make it as sophisticated or as easy as you want getting into hydroponics uh, and by the way that it respect to that because i i'll bet you it's shallow water culture and i'll bet you the water is constantly moving so it's constantly getting aerated and uh i i do wonder i don't know about the the temperature and whatnot but that to me i don't see a bunch of drippers there I don't see a lot of fail points on his, so I, I'd be will, I'd be willing to check it out. I'll bet it's pretty decent. I suspect Kuzmas knows what he's doing there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, uh, looks like it. He sent me some <laughs> bud a handful of times, and it's freaking dank. So that's yeah. what I expect, man. That's what I. That's what you're supposed to come back with. Of course he does. Dang it. <laughs> Oh, did you want to get into some of the different type of systems? What's you up? know what? What's up? I just got to show why I don't do deep water culture anymore. Would you just hit a uh, uh, slimy roots? I googled slimy roots because oh, this is this is when I've you know it's this. all bad. It's just all bad. Happened to me. Point. Yep. Yeah, and that's oh from my temp- god. That happens with temperature. You know, I'm a bacteria guy. Bacteria grows. Uh, the closer you get to 90 degrees, that's as fast as that bacteria is going to grow. And if you don't have a chiller in an 84 degree room and a black bucket that's absorbing heat, you can get heat and bacteria is going to grow in there or fungi is going to grow in there. And that's going to be the end of your deep water culture system. That's why it's yeah, way I do think- cooler. I just, I, I got to give a shameless real growers uh, plug. That's why it's way cool to have a shitload. Uh, uh oh, did I get in trouble, Grandpa? No, nah, you're good. Uh, Fourteen a, in a lot of soil, or in my case, it's inert cocoa. So it's we'll call it inert. We inoculate it with the recharge. There's all sorts of bacteria and fungi hanging out in there, ready to colonize the roots, whether they're beneficial or they're just there taking up space. 
they are there. So when those pathogens just try to start to get some resources and try to start growing in that media, it's already colonized. The roots that are hanging down in the water, they're already colonized. So that's a big deal. If we're going to talk about hydro, is cocoa hydro? Uh, cocoa is, yeah, it is. I say it's hydro. I sure. mean, it's, and when uh, we talk, there's talking like, I don't want to say we confuse sterile and no nutrient. When I talk about these medias, whether it's rock wool or whether it's cocoa uh, or whatever, I mean, they're they're not sterile. There's no way you can keep things sterile. I mean, when they're doing like surgery, you can see they unwrap the scalpel from a package where it was just sterilized. I mean, that's what you got to do to really keep things sterile. So whether this is coming out of the, the can of cocoa processing plant or it's the rock wool sitting on a truck or my vape right here and there's there's trichoderma on this clone and there's trichoderma on this vape and it's everywhere it's all over my jacket it's all over my skin that's nasty no it's y'all, not it's y'all actually nasty i i have reached a commensal relationship with my trichoderma not thank me, you bro. i'm i'm sterile anyway i just think it's funny when you ask somebody like chet from canna shout out to canna coco great media sponsor of this show you can give a you can, no. They don't sterilize it. No, they don't try to sterilize it. There's there's no well, way they, you, they'll, they'll steam treat it or something like that, or they'll treat it. UV. As the cocoa well, is sterilized pretty thoroughly through UV light. It does not last well, long, and by avoiding heat and steam sterilization, the particle size remains in place. So I believe that's the differentiating factor there: UV versus heat and steam. Ah, uh, uh, let's, let's not cruise over that really quick because that just uh, helped me understand a lot why that cheap cocoa that I'm getting is such a low performer. That steam will clog up the pores, right? It clogs up the air holes, uh, from what I'm to understand. As the UV yep, does, it says not. they hold. So with this process, the the amount of water they hold. Uh, is it stays as designed? What you're saying is product clogged up and salt levels remain in check. Especially, that, do they wash cocoa with salt water? That's no, that doesn't make sense. I, I mean, uh, no, they don't. At least they shouldn't. I guess some of it might be processed <laughs> with salt water. Yeah, uh, brackish water. But, and then how often do they change the water? Yeah, I mean there is some quality control in that. Well, with its inertness, I'll throw a little what's going on in my grill right here because I've been having some germination issues um, with germinating in cocoa. And I've just been trying to germinate seeds in straight cocoa. And I didn't know that that was basically a a potential issue as far as peat works a little bit better. Um, This this is off of CocoaForCannabis.com. I just found it and it says, planting seeds directly in cocoa is challenging. I don't even recommend it. Even well-buffered cocoa requires continuous supply of calcium and magnesium, which can be very difficult to satisfy both the needs of the cocoa and the needs of your young sprout if you're growing in straight cocoa. So their recommendation is to start in straight peat jiffy pellets and then transplant into your cocoa media. Fine. So the past 10 days, I've really been having struggling with these orange gasms and straight cocoa. And I'm like, damn, dude, like I'm usually pretty good. So I think I'm going to blame... The cocoa is part of the factor for starting seeds. Do you start seeds in straight cocoa ever? Do you do peat pellets? I wish I remember the last time I started seeds, man. This is a huge <laughs> cut, man. Loving in our eyes. Great. I have nothing to worry about. I'm lazy. Man, hey, you I mean, know what? You can... I'm gonna, I do have some seeds here, and I will do a grow dots experiment. When I do uh, clones, you know, clones require very little nutrition. I guess as soon as they root, but as soon as they root, I'm putting them uh, with a, a little bit of grow dots, about a table, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of grow dots in there. And it's just providing that cocoa's inert. So it's providing just that little bit of nutrition that it needs to get some roots growing on there. So I will play around with, uh, oh, there's my there's my clone cam. Clone oh. cam. <laughs> I got Scotty set up on clone cam. Uh, but anyway, that's with just a tiny bit of nutrition. I'm just curious, cocoa's inert. So if you put that tiniest bit of nutrients in there, I'm curious if it would, uh, if if your seed would pop. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I I'm giving it some uh, some Ramos kelp I laid around because the one 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 well, K should help out kelp with hey, for seedlings. Hang on a second. So kelp is just hormones, though. I mean, maybe it has some uh, phosphorus. I'm sorry, potassium in there, but. Very it is 
So my point is, you're not giving it anything but hormones. Man, this thing's hungry. You think about a baby. Baby needs to eat. This thing's hungry. Yeah. You gotta be hungry. You gotta be hungry. You made me. You made me jealous on a side note with your clone there. You know, usually I'm, you know, busting Scotty balls a little bit with, you always just, yo, get a, get a cut, get a cut. And so I'm like, okay, look, I'm not counting on these orange gasms. Um, you got backup DGCO cannabis 613 has got some clones of orange gasms coming my way, hopefully. Oh, but in the meantime, I'm like, I got to get some stuff going. And I found a pack of bog bubble gum. Nice. Uh, strain. I think Scotty did Bog come to the DDC Cup with his wife. We met him and his yeah. wife somewhere. What's it stand for? This- What's Bog stand for? Bushy he's old grower. Up. He's the bushy old <laughs> grower, <laughs> man. Right. Yeah, he's um, cool. You want to talk about old school? That's, that's a dude in his sixties or seventies, seventies, and his wife going to shows and just uh, this is what they do. You know, they, they make did. these strains. No gimmick involved. Uh, yeah, that's what they did. Bog did. Bog yeah, passed yeah. away. Well, okay, sorry. Uh, Rest in peace, Bob. It's okay. It's okay. Regardless, where were we recording on that? And how <laughs> I do a weed show? I didn't even know that, man. No, uh, yeah, he died a while ago. Give me the quick map. I got a twelve pack of About seeds. Dirty there. man, not, fem- not feminized. How long will it take me to get to the cut I want? First, I got to grow them out. I got to clone every. Then I got to make sure I find the females. But I got to clone everything, male or female. To make sure I have backups of all of them, then I got to go through the cycle. So I'm thinking, but Grandpa, oh, yeah, man. What if uh, he gets something that looks good, but he wants to back cross it with itself? <laughs> you know, what I mean, you're talking <laughs> another year <laughs> there, but I mean, well, you could only do that from seed because then you grow out the male, flip it over. I thought it was colloidal silver that they used to flip. Yeah, but Noah from Do Your Right Genetics actually said it was something different. No, now. it's uh, they have th- silver thiosulfate and colloidal silver yeah. are both used. I think one's less dangerous than the other okay. for messing things up. Interesting. Yeah. I think I need to go for it. One, tribute to Bog. Two, I have the seeds here. Three, I'm learning. Don't plant them in straight cocoa. Don't you do a grow show, dude? <laughs> so... And then for why why not? I, I'm I think I'm gonna get that going. Um, and we'll start to have an update on the regular of, of the new grow room, man. All kinds of things are happening. Mini splits going down. Freaking this thing's gonna be pimp, man. It's gonna be like Mac Daddy spaceship. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet. Mac, call it Mac Daddy spaceship, dude. <laughs> hey, we're in the Mac Daddy spaceship, crew. I'm just looking for some Mac Daddy grandpa. Grow ship. We're popping seat. Oh, I like that. And Mac Daddy Grow Ship. We need a shirt with that on it, right? Ooh, I'm liking where this is going. We got Ooh. synergy. Hey, we could open up for Grambo when he does his comedy. Yeah, you could. Josh <laughs> Grambo, comedian, and Mac Daddy Grow Ship opening up. Got it. You got it. My man. I like it. Hey, I- I'm going to pop some seeds. Grambo, before you leave today, we're popping seeds, or at least we're going to get them going. All right. Uh, because, yeah, I got to see what's going on there. Now, this is... Something I just picked up. This is Three's Genetics, man. Pink drink. Should we pop these? Oh, yeah. They, he gave us that at the cup. I yeah, it's a straw guava, with, you know, the Kuma Gross cut yeah. uh, by Great Pie times Wedding Crashers F2. And, I mean, the F2 just opens up that genetic bank, man. Here's your unicorn, right? <laughs> See, I learned. I listened back to the show. I yeah. love unicorns. <laughs> DG I mean, yeah. about me. Is that what you're looking for, though, dude? To be serious, are you looking for something that nobody else has? That you do we call it the unicorn? If, you, if you're newer to the show, or are you looking for something that looks like the mama? And from what I remember, F ones look like the mama, and F twos. Do I have that right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I run the book. Are, are are the ones that uh, <laughs> Noah that, dropped that, it down? So yeah, the you guys didn't watch bank. the last uh, episode with Noah from Do Your Right Genetics. Check that one. I out. believe F two is where the genetic bank opens up. Yeah, I, I don't need a unicorn. I need the best that this twelve pack can give me, and then I need to get growing because time is is money. Time is whatever. I'm not just growing for money, if you will. It's not even part of the factor, actually. But the fact of, um, I have a buddy that's like, hey, why don't we could go to the the marketer we could i can get you the list like somebody could hand me a list tomorrow with 50 strains on it and i could pick however many i want of them pay five to eight dollars each and have them ready and be way ahead of the ball but it's gonna be the same as like what other people are doing in my region like i got a pack of bog that's probably not going around here so i want to bring something in for other people to enjoy smoking they're not getting from that menu or that's too trendy they don't trendy is not my style so Right. Um, that's kind of why I, I think I got to get them going. Not See, I just, I just want to be high. <laughs> yeah, that works as well. Hey, it says right here, though, in the description, 
It says a long lasting and happy high. I'm sold. I am thinking now. Every everybody talks about the different strains and their different effects, and I'm like, no, I just want to be high. And now I'm like, well, there are some days when I can uh, actually think of words and express myself a lot better than other days. Maybe that's strain dependent, dude. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's about time we give some shout out to real growers here, man. Talking about microbes and one of the reasons why I won't say you don't like hydro, but that you know that vacancy maybe freaks you out a little bit when you can't be having a bunch of microbes partying in the water. Uh, it's a huge deal that we showed that picture of that slimy roots. Man, when you have slimy roots and that's what you're supposed to, you know, that's what's supposed to keep you going for the next four months financially, uh, you shake your head. And, and so when I came to Colorado, learned about can of cocoa, and then started playing with these sip buckets and saw the reliability, uh, yeah, that was a big problem to solve. It's like, to, you know, Please help me solve this uh, this root problem that's just killing all my plants. Sure, just use them, keep them in water less. Use a lot more microbes and a lot more media. When you give them that media with that uh, with the air and the water and a, a nice moisture, uh, you're giving them the perfect opportunity for microbes to grow. So it can be either good microbes or bad microbes. So we want to keep them good microbes growing. And that's why when I was doing deep water culture and a lot of hydro, I wasn't really able to figure out a way to do microbes. So I would just have to keep everything super clean. That's where that hydrogen peroxide comes in. Uh, I think about, you know, I don't know, don't you peroxide your mouth and that kills all the all the bacteria in there I mean, one could i don't know if you're i guess you, yeah right on the baking so they have baking soda and peroxide toothpaste right? oh yeah i think that's more for whitening but uh yeah i, I don't know if that's well what do you think makes your microbes. teeth yellow magic man Ooh, it's bacteria you know back <laughs> anyway anyway so it's uh <laughs> it's just a way call. to keep and by the way bacteria are, are gonna grow anyway so you might as well grow good bacteria and good fungus uh on your plants and on your plant roots have that loaded in your soil or if we're doing hydro in your inert media, which will no longer be inert. And it's just a base, base, uh, great way to protect your plants. So that's what Real Growers Recharge is all about. Make some growing easier, guys. Check out realgrowers.com. Uh, you can get everything over there. Your grow dots as well for your one-part nutrition. If you're in Canada, recharge.canada.ca. The two right out of BC, baby. And yes. uh, check it all out, man. I'm supposed yes. to do these uh, pre written commercials. Me and High C worked, and they're very, uh, uh, you know, worked out, and every word is there. And now I'm just like, come on, man, let's talk microbes. <laughs> so I had <I> <laughs> my, my own recharge commercial to talk microbes. Sorry. So thinking about sterile growing and sterile media, it makes me think about like, what about my sterile gut? Like, I don't want my gut to be grown hydroponically and I have to put it in, like, a peroxide mix to take care of stuff. Dude, it's so true. There's so many. It's so easy to understand this because all living things, all living organisms uh, have a microbiome to them. And don't say, oh, amoebas don't, man. All right, but we do. Meaning that there's bacteria and fungi growing all over us all the time so that's why dude when you skin your knee mountain biking it you don't get some terrible infection and you end up getting gangrene and it rots your leg off sure the the microbes so wait, that is, yes sir is neosporin good or not because me and my son and wife we all got in a pretty good argument about it i'm like i don't use it like i'm like no dude i mean if it's so dirty awesome. clean it like if it's like you know like you fell on some concrete like if it's dirty clean it but after that like i'll just use any natural like salve or balm yeah. or whatever but I've, i don't like me rub some dirt I don't feel like in it <laughs> yeah spit on it first and then rub dirt into it That's okay what so what are for. you doing there both of those things are known to have a lot of microbes in there your spit and your and uh and dirt so what you're doing when and the neosporin i'm not against it because what you're doing you're killing out all the pathogens so the pathogens are going to try to to get on in there uh, if you have a good microbiome, you'll be fine. That's why you don't need neosporin. Uh, but I don't think there's anything wrong with just wiping the, the field clean right on the wound and then having the good microbiome hopefully repopulate faster than the, ba the bad guys or girls. The, anti the antimicrobial effect of saliva is well known due to several proteins and peptides that act against bacteria to reduce the chance of infection. What do dogs do? They lick their wounds, right? Mm -hmm. 
And remember, you always hear dogs have a naturally healing bacteria in their mouth, man. No. I didn't add licking into it yet. Well, I might be kind of weird while I'm sitting on the couch yeah. watching a show, fam. <laughs> licking might be. Nah. I got a new dog. <laughs> Hey, this is interesting, though, man. The skin microbiome, sometimes called the skin flora, is a term for the trillions of bugs that live on our skin. Over a thousand different bacterial species and over 80 different fungal species. Uh, some of these also reside in your butt microbiome. And by the way, including staph, strep, Canada species. No, you guys got a, you have a pathogen named after you. Candida species. Uh, Bifidobacterium, lactobacillus, man, those are those are cool words. But staph and strep, we've all gotten strep throat before. That's a yeah. strain of strep getting out of control, probably because you removed or something hurt all these other strains of uh, commensal, you know, non-pathogenic uh, ah, strep. Commensal. Thank you very much, man. I've been, I, you know, I studied microbes a little bit, man. You know. No, I love look up commensal. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, watch the last few episodes. Scott's been dropping the science on. I, I must have read a video, read a video on it. No, uh, no watch it. Commensal just means it's the, they, we can't figure out what the hell they're there for, man. They're taking up space, and maybe that that might be why they're there. Them taking up space might be exactly the reason they're there, and that fascinates me endlessly. Yeah, are they just there to take up space? And then I was telling my wife about this, and she's just like, "Like this person? <laughs> That's what I'm saying." And I was like, "Dude, you can't say that." <laughs> when I heard that, though, I was like, "Maybe that, uh, maybe I, you know." Yeah, <laughs> we all have a little commensal. In. That's we're, all right, man. We're all a little commensal, Scotty. <laughs> anyway, I just thought it was interesting. We're so loaded. You know, can you really expect your cocoa core that was brought here on a, you know, wherever you know, on a truck? And then put in the grocery store. I mean, can you really expect that to be sterile? I don't think you expect anything, maybe, but a scalpel that comes out of a package to be sterile. Not much. Like I said, it, it makes me makes me worrisome. Like you said, I always get that that no vacancy sign's a good one. Yeah, uh, that's just like what happened actually, in maybe next grow talk, you know. So to those, if you're listening, that kind of reacted to me bringing three pepper plants into my grow tent from outside. And they're like, Ooh. man, did you do anything for bugs for those? And this grow tent isn't growing any cannabis right now, you know. And in either way, I'd have a rather good cleaning process before cannabis was introduced. But uh, there's nothing in that tent to combat any bugs coming in. And sure enough, I was picking some peppers the other day, and I'm like, oh, that pepper feels sticky. Oh shit, dude, Bro. honey, like so aphids, aphids, Bro. loving the peppers. They look pretty good. Simmer down now. I like a challenge. We'll talk about it for a sec. Why not? Uh, it, and I called uh, get herpes, uh, the, the bug, man. the bug lady in Canada. There's one actually that lives uh, 45 minutes from out, so it's great to get beneficials quick. And I'm like, man, I should spray these. I'm like, screw this. Let's we're gonna hit them with ladybugs, and then I'm also following up with lacewing eggs, so they won't be fully hatched. They'll be the kind of the cleanup crew in case the ladybugs don't take care of everything. But I'm excited to just see that going on i get it man if these were popped into a grow tent with cannabis plants people would be shaking their heads right now and i have to be very careful my other grow that i'm building isn't active yet either i'm not going to cross contaminate but uh man people are like what are you doing with the peppers dude but i gotta go just quickly a ghost a carolina reaper and a uh, uh caribbean or scorpion trinidad and to have those fresh for the next two months is so fun to trade with some of the neighbors and shit because I'm like the main cat with the peppers, homie. I have to raise yeah, my hand. Ahead. Isn't that even more like just cannabis? Like cannabis, there is unique, subtle flavors, but it all gets you high. By the way, I might have to recant what I said because I put this one out. Whatever this is got me too high. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it, isn't it a lot like that where it's a spice? You're eating it for that burn. You're smoking this to get high. After that, it's these tiny, what is it, a tiny little subtlety. There's no way you're going to tell me that a uh, reaper is different than a scorpion pepper. Like, that. oh, there's so much oh, different oh. flavor in this. Yeah, reaper. This one tastes uh, like burning. So does this one. And, well, heat levels are different, but flavors, when you're making, definitely, like, ghost pepper has a way different flavor and is pretty damn good compared to a trend and scorpion for, like, making certain sauces. When you get into it, like you said, we're comparing um, the same. It's kind of the, you know, crosses are growing cannabis. But the main thing, again, people are like, oh, well, you can buy that stuff in the store. No, you can't. Where I'm at, like, there's no way to get peppers this nice 
this hot, this fresh, if you're really like a pepperhead, as they call us. Yes. So it's uh, hard to, to get rid of them. Is it a caps, uh, capsation? No, it's like a capsicum or oh, something like that. that. There's an expert. Oh. Yeah, there's a capsaicin <laughs> expert, hot pepper expert. <laughs> I'm doing hot pepper. You know how many analogies there are? What's the THC concentrate called that like you can just buy, like just distillate or the white or that's just like yeah, a concentrated the clear, the clear started it and yeah, just distillate now. So I think that's a, probably just not a great high. And then as far as being a pepperhead, if you want, you can just buy the straight capsaicin. I think I'm saying that right. Like straight, yes. really hot juice. Uh, sure. To put just like a sauce or a recipe. Yeah, Dow Pharmaceutical made that. It was called Marinoff. No, you know oh, what I'm man, saying yeah. though? That's the that's yeah, the THC yeah. of it. So you can extract that THC if you want. That's the clear, bro. Okay, that's the clear. But that's just the essential. I know, right? I'm just kidding. I don't know who made that stuff. But uh the idea is the active ingredient. You can always separate out the separate the active ingredient out, but it makes it boring. It's the terpenes, man. It's the entourage effect. Flavonoids, bro. Trying to think. We used to use something to have hot pepper, and it would keep it. It was like an animal barrier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah, when I was yeah. at the nursery, sir. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about the opposite of hydroponics. One would be going into Scotch Groom back in the day and seeing a dead snake in a hood. What the? Of a light, like a hood, like a lighting hood. <laughs> Well, it makes complete sense when you think about it. The the air cooled lights are blowing hot air out one, you know, into a basement window cell where a snake's gonna be like, damn, yeah. it seems like it's probably nice to get in here. And that was just a trip to see that. Anyway, I'm like, you got a snake in the hood there. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, sh hey, hang on, man. Dude, can I just take an interlude and hopefully make you laugh, sir? Yeah. When we were doing, I was doing a little bit of research and we were talking, you know, you were talking about when you skin your knee or something like that. Do you want to wash it out or do you want just regular bacteria to take care of it, your own bacteria? So as I was researching, I came across this article that I thought you might enjoy. Road rash, symptoms, diagnosis, causes, and treatment. <laughs> and since you're a mountain biker, you know, road rash is when you wreck or skateboard and whatever and you... You, know, you skin your knees, you skin your elbows, you skin yourself. Oh, no, you're not Googling road rash. No, you? I just... It's going to be terrible. <laughs> but anyway, it's like, just the, listen to this article, man. I mean, it's already technical. Ready, dude? Oh, that's a bitch. You know, go to the article if you would. <laughs> Jesus. Road we rash. We wonder why we have a violence problem. Remember road rash? It was a great game. Well, do me a favor. Just scroll this article. How road rash happens. Keep going. There. Is that classic or what, man? Now keep going. Common road rash versus traumatic tattoos. Hmm. Traumatic tattoos. Is that when the people are just like, you got tattooed, homie? What the traumatic heck? tattooing. <laughs> Do you ever hear of your grandma? <laughs> yeah, I gotta know. Uh, <laughs> symptoms of road rash. All right. Common road. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So, wonder what the symptoms are. Abrasive of road rash or are. explosive types of wounds. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought this was funny, man. Treatment, first aid, stop and assess, dude. I just thought this article was perfect, man. Safety first. How to prevent road rash. <laughs> don't crash. With wrist guards. Oh, my God. You guys got to wear wrist guards. I hope that made you smile, dude. That made me laugh when I saw that one. And although I don't get road rash, maybe dirt rash. See, we already get it better as mountain bikers because you're crashing into dirt, so you already get the healing properties of the dirt rubbed into the wound. Good to go. Ah, you might. <laughs> I, you, I don't think you're wrong, man. I don't think you're wrong. And by the one last public service announcement, dude, don't use antibiotics. Or at least, I'm sorry, not don't use them. Don't overuse them. If you're really sick and you got an infection that your body can't fight, absolutely, man. Antibiotics are huge. Um, but man, the overuse of them just being like, I don't know, I feel kind of sick. I think I'm going to have the doctor call me in a Z-Pack. That stuff screws up your microbiome. It does anti-no-biotic life. No life. Yes. The, uh, yeah, the quick hit on that is basically like the, it is, it was overly used or teenly by doctors. And then I think they, it, and this ties in potential with painkillers, they found like the longer 
a doctor was like on shift meeting with patients, like the pay, as the day would go on, they'd prescribe, not all doctors, I want a blanket statement here, but be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to give you some antibiotics without like, they're like tired of talking and really trying to figure it out. Um, and this happened here at my house, like my mother-in-law, probably more, she's 72 of the age where it's like, yeah, antibiotics will fix it, you know, because my son had a little bit of a sickness. She's like, let's send him in. He needs to get some antibiotics. I'm like, right. oh, let's wait. What, like, what's wait here? What, what's the rush? It's a big deal, yeah. man, because he, she's saying, oh, let's, you know, the short fix is to just trash his microbiome. And you're like, no, let's let his see if his microbiome can overcome whatever is happening here. It's a big deal because you know what happens when your microbiome overcomes something? It remembers it. There's a memory yeah. there where they go, hey, man, I figured this out. The same way with antibiotic resistance. They're like, hey, man, we figured out how to beat this antibiotic over here. And then good luck trying to get rid of that. You better hope it's commensal. <laughs> Thank you very much. I like this uh, article here out of the BBC.com. It says you might also like links to other articles here. How gut bacteria controls your brain. Why a workout is good for your gut and bacteria they're right i might also like those articles yeah be proud of me i resisted getting distracted i wanted to click on every single one of those articles but i was like no i gotta finish the show gotta keep focused here scotty all right but yeah it's interesting stuff man i could dig down this rabbit hole that just made me think um a simple statement i like to come up with my son listens to all this motivational joe rogan and different clips and stuff he finds but it's like so if somebody's like man i don't know I think hard, hard time getting motivated to exercise and hearing that comment, you know, it helps your gut bacteria. Basically, it's like you should exercise because it basically helps every single aspect of your entire life. It's just like a blanket statement for somebody. It's all. Yeah, I'm motivated. it's true. Sorry, the dog was snoring, man. So uh, he's Coco getting, should exercise, but... it looks like. Yeah, Coco Sorry. should exercise. She's really good at laying around, man, you know, <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? At least she's not snoring anymore. You can, uh, we got, we're going to talk about the opposite of hydroponics. First, I want to shout out to, uh, I'm throwing this on you, Graham, or pros, dudegrows.com forward slash pros, man. That's where all our pros are listed. Coupon codes. If you're shopping for a girl, maybe you're like me and you're like really bored at night. I'm like, man, if I hop on Amazon, I'm probably going to find something that makes something like I need. And, uh, but the, the pros list, DGC vetted gear. Uh, add coupon codes for everybody listed over there and a great way to get good product or upgrade your grow. When I talk about Amazon, Scotty, my wife tried to bust my balls at this. We had a softball, like a five hour softball day this last Saturday. She's like, what have you been doing looking at your phone? I'm like, I was ordered a couple things on Amazon. She's like, you got problems. I'm like, listen, I got peanuts and I ordered some microgreens from somebody because we were at the ball game. So the, the girls ate all our peanuts. So I'm like, is that better? How about Amazon and order more peanuts? Well, you know what? It's fresh in my mind. Dude. In the shell. In the shell, unsalted is my style. I feel empowered throwing them all over the place, too. It's like you're littering, but you're not. Right. Dude, you got me thinking about just drinking and ordering on Amazon. I went to the football game on oh. Saturday. And then my buddy was like, hey, dude, how, you know, somebody helped me um, uh, with a business thing. They gave me a, a contact. And I was like, oh, that, that was so, so cool. I was like, I should get him a little gift or something. And then me and my buddy just decided somehow it uh, just, we're going to get him a gag gift. And then we're going to buy him something called Gregory Pecker. There's a, I dare you to Google it, man. There's a, no, no, it'll get us age gated. It almost is worth getting age gated for Gregory Pecker there. But uh, yeah, I got stuck on sending him like the note that came with it. I was like, I don't know what to say. And I woke up the next morning with Gregory Pecker in my cart, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time that happened, man. Yeah, I'm like 20 nickels. So if we talk about <laughs> the opposite Gregory of hydroponics. Pecker. The opposite yes, of hydroponics is basically what Mother Nature does. That's what I say. It's like, just go walk right. in the woods and as you can see how it works out it's pretty amazing hang on we just said hydroponics was the fastest way to grow that we've ever seen mother nature i mean it, it's uh, amazing and it's right in balance but it's not as fast as a deep horticulture hydroponic system unless it's kelp in the ocean maybe or bamboo maybe pretty fast Why you you're just working my own material against me man all right <laughs> yeah i am <laughs> yes, kelp the fastest growing plant in the world. It just grows like crazy. Uh, it's in the ocean. It is a plant though. And then bamboo, you know, only in spurts. When bamboo is growing in shoots, 
That shoot can grow like 8, 10, 12 inches a day. You can put your hat on it uh, when it's like, when it's on the ground and come back at the end of the day and it'll be 6 inches, 8 inches up. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. I like your hat. Put put your hat on it analogy. Yeah, that's why um, I have a but hat yeah, there's here. All kinds. I'm kind of familiar, unfamiliar with biodynamic. You got KNF with free and natural farming. Do me a um, favor. These are interesting. I'm not super familiar with them either, but I know they're really interesting. So I just hung out and Googled them yesterday. Uh, yeah, hang on a second. So biodynamic farming, that's that. Is it Rudolf Steiner? Rudolf Steiner. This was something that he had promoted. Australian Austrian philosopher and social reformer. Hmm, sounds like a great fun guy to hang out with, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> it says Rudolf Steiner developed a I don't know. That's boring. Any, anyway, <laughs> it talks about, uh, I remember this is like planting with the phases of the moon and whatnot. Biodynamic preparations for soil and plants. The highly diluted, diluted prep. Hang on. Yeah. Cow horn manure and horn silica. Yeah. There's all this really interesting stuff where you're putting stuff in a cow, in a cow's horn and you're harvesting on the you know, full moon, the full moon, or whatever. Kind of yeah. sounds like witches brew stuff. I don't know. I'm not saying it's BS. <laughs> if it was hard, if you didn't have a cow, I mean, I know this is, you know. Sounds like how Harry Potter would garden or something. I don't But what? <laughs> yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> but if you're like, hey, man, I'm uh, at every full moon, I go out there because I can see good. And at night, because it's cooler temperatures is given a chance for, I don't know, the bacteria to grow, to come, whatever it is. I pack it in this cow's horn and it's easy for me to carry home and it's easy for me to store. And then the next full moon, it seems to be ready. Like if I didn't have a watch, you know, if I was bad at keeping time, I like to drink a lot. I'm just kind of ignorant to it. And KNF, it, it has some practices that you don't have to just do Korean natural farming full style. I've seen some different like ferments and things you can take from that and apply it to even your cocoa grow dots grow. If you want to, you know, add some FPJs, you know what I'm saying, Scotty? Hmm. A few FPJs in there might be good. A fermented plant juices. You're telling me that if you take something that has a bunch of sugar in it and ferment it, that it's not going to feed the bacteria. It makes total sense, man. This is straight up science. You're just doing it with natural stuff. I didn't realize we have a really hardcore DGC named KNF. I didn't realize like that's what the KNF. That must be what it is. Let me know, KNF. Is that what your name is yes. KNF for? Yes. Nice. Uh, biodynamic farming aims to create healthy soils using compost and crop and grazing rotations. I mean, that completely makes sense. You have animals graze on the field. You put crop you put crops on there. And uh, then you compost. So it's, I mean, it all does make sense, man. It encourages microbial life needed for soil fertility, uh, which is suppressed by chemical fertilizers. It's pretty cool stuff. Planting by the moon, stars, and planets. While traditional farming has long used lunar almanacs, and that's true, man. The farmer's almanac tells you the phase of the moon, right? Yes, sir. The di lunar biodynamic ca calendar also includes constellations and planetary alignments, man. When Mercury is in retrograde, bro. Does anybody know what that means? It's an illusion. <laughs> it means that it looks like it goes backwards, but it doesn't go backwards. Retrograde is an you, illusion. Hey, when you say, go ahead. Planting like on a full moon, cloning on a full moon, uh, that supposedly makes a difference. And yeah, I, I bet you, I don't know. What do you think? There are certain gravitational pulls of the moon. It's a sixth the size of 100%. the yeah, you're reminding me of, uh, this made me feel pretty ignorant the other day, driving over this bridge by me, uh, I'll driving over the Fraser River, um, which eventually meets, um, I don't call it the ocean, the Salish, Salish Sea or something outside <laughs> of Vancouver. Anyway, so I was looking over off the bridge and I'm like, man, my neighbor's in there. I'm like, the river's looking pretty low, dude. Like I can see like the dirt over there I usually don't see. And he's like, dude, it's, uh, it's a tidal river. So that, that happens. <laughs> So, you know, the tide affects the river way upstream, too, to a significant degree. And, yeah, that just the power of the moon definitely, I believe, has, it has a place in timing. Just like the former's almanac stuff you get into, you know, it's pretty interesting to read through one of those every once in a while. On weed. The almanac yes. on weed. Exclusively. <laughs> Do they have one? 
for outdoor cannabis growers, a cannabis growers farmer's almanac that applies I'm specifically to regions of the and dope. If not, we should Got get, we should get that URL. No, just do this, man, because I just typed it the Stoner's Almanac. Ah. There's no Stoner's Almanac, man. Man. We are the Stoner's Almanac. Oh, dude. Nice. Man. <laughs> nice. I thought that was interesting stuff. The whole biodynamic and then is Korean natural farming, is that kind of the same thing? I don't I'm not gonna make that blanket statement kind of the same thing i would say no i think they probably practice some of the same type of compost and usage of what around korean natural farming also i believe is very like you, you can only use what's around you kind of stuff we'll get let's get a pro on scotty let's get an expert on guys give us some comments reach out i know there's definitely some cats out there that know a lot about that come hang on the show and learn a little uh i do want to give some shout outs though man you down from dbc yeah, producers I'm I'm just still still looking at fish. Yeah, fish amino acids sounds delicious, doesn't it? I saw a fish amino acids. Mm. That's cover band. (laughs) You always been that quick, or is this something new? Yeah, I've always been that quick. I like it, but not that I'm conceited. Comment. There's a comment left. I was conceited, and I yeah, yeah. it's calcium phosphate. Wow, this is a. They're dissolving. Man, this is calcium phosphate is insoluble in water. It's bones, basically. But the compound becomes available in acids. So you can make a calcium fertilizer, a phosphorus fertilizer, uh, by extracting the beneficial minerals from animal bones. And they're cooking the bones. They char them up. And then they, uh, what do they do? They put them in a five-gallon bucket with vinegar at a rate of 10 parts per one bones. Vinegar for one bones. Wow, it sits for two weeks, and then you apply it at a thousand to one. Jeez, a little goes a long way. That's Korean natural farming. That's huh? pretty cool. It's like prison farming, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, dude's like, I'm not gonna go as far as to call it the same thing because it's prison farming. Oh uh, shit, patented. All right, you sparked that, Jay. Now let's do some DDC producer shout outs. Yeah. Now Find we're in a new term, prison, prison farming. Uh, <laughs> started off with PC at PC at BC. What's up? And man, I soiled my plants. Oh, no. Here you go. That's <laughs> Korean natural farming, right? Just composted for two weeks first, man. Nice. And then uh, uh, don't forget the rack. Attack. I think I got that. Wow. Rack attack. Rack attack. Rack attack. Wow. Nice, man. You always give me the good ones. Don't forget about the witches of Coos. All right. Is that Coos Moss there? That's the witch of Coos. Oh, the witch of Coos, no. man. Sorry, I was thinking about that movie. Yeah, the witches of thing. Uh, I Place. Can't remember the name of Morlock. It. Techno natural grower. Hey. Techno natural grower. I like that. That's cool. I like that, you know? I'm K and F, but I got everything on cameras, man, you know, and music. Grambo, were you ever into techno music? A little bit. Were you? You go to the clubs, man? No, uh, no, I never went to the clubs. No? No. Dude, you were never into techno music, were you? My oh, man, I'd go to the clubs where they'd have, like, the big bubble jam and have bubble machines going so nobody can see anybody and everybody gropes yeah. everybody inappropriately. Nice. Yes, there's a phone room, bro. A phone room. Uh, I met a doctor oh, there one time. Yeah, Dr. Proctor. I met Dr. Proctor. <laughs> Dr. What's Proctor. up, Dr. Proctor? DDC producer, yes. And if you guys don't know the mantra, mantra, if I can say of the show, get people growing, have a good time, let's laugh, let's learn in public. And it's hard to do that, man. We're up against Google, YouTube, Bing business. Yeah. Well, they're just still actually strong. It's how, you know, having a it's sometimes mind blowing, um, trying to be able to, what I say, pay the bills, at least for a business in the cannabis industry sometimes, especially with what we're doing. Dugros.com forward slash support. It's a great way to come on board. $10 a month pays for itself with access to our community, Discord collective knowledge of expert growers like soup the gardener jr token one eye cat cannabis myself every friday we have a happy hour and don't forget 30 percent off grow dots and recharge come on come on bring it on over to yeah. those.com forward slash support all the bennies are listed there and you are making this show happen we couldn't do it without you believe that if you don't believe me listen back to whatever episode we lost our paypal and i almost had a heart attack and said how are we going to have a show scotty like what are we going to do so yeah. I've thought that a couple Another times, reason, dude. 
<laughs> Let's take it to the fall. A prohibition report. Still can't believe it's taking so long. How much longer will we be able to do the fall of prohibition report? A couple of years. Until Big Pharma takes it over. And the ball nice and fast. Well, this week we tapped into Virginia. Virginia, man, and got some great comments, man. If you guys go over to the Dude Grows IG, how do I tell people to go to the Dude Grows IG? I sound old school. Dude Grows Show on IG? Underscore at Dude Grows Show? What do I say? Yeah. Dude Grows, uh, Instagram.com slash Dude Grows will get you there. Yeah. And if you want to at us, like, at Dude Grows. At Dude Gross. I got to be honest, dude. That's all I know about Instagram, too. I put my pictures there and people look at them. And by the way, if anybody does subscribe to my Instagram, I bought another pair of them Merle shoes. Just another. I subscribe to Real Growers Inc. on Instagram. That's how I put together my real bucket uh, system. I, I'm official. I think- I'm official owner of a real bucket system, Scotty. I put it together. I got my reservoir sitting over here. Yeah. Oh. I actually gave it's a a big day. It was almost finished. I'll finished. actually hear soon, guys. I'll, I'll be able to start chipping in on showing what's going on in my growth. Yeah, that's awesome, Grandpa. Yeah. Hey, by the way, thank you for all the support. The Real bu- Bucket Systems, I just want to play around. I have no desire to make money off plastic buckets. Uh, I just want to get a bunch of people using this system because it's so easy. So I put these on sale. I think they're, what, 99 bucks. I put them on. Mm-hmm. They're cheap they're about what I have to pay for all the stuff, man. So if anybody's interested in playing with them, uh, realgrowers.com, dude. Realbuckets.com. Yeah, realbuckets.com is is all live, guys. But, dude, I gave it's Rambo a set. Dude, if you were here, you'd have a set. And for real, I watched this very video. When you guys log on to it, oh. th- this is the video that I watched to set it up. Hi, C and Scott nailed it, and it's a great video. Hey, do you have a picture of my growth? Uh, I do. I got a video. Oh, come girl, on. Actually. It's going good. Let me show off, yeah. dude. Yeah, this is how long since you've been toying with oh, it? Oh, we put it this way. That bucket is almost empty. <laughs> it really is. Hey, look, I know I'm slacking when the five-gallon bucket, all you got to do is keep a five-gallon bucket filled. They look great. They went empty. They look good, right, man? That is mm-hmm. grow dots and hit them with recharge every now and again. Yeah. That's all that is. And that's that's uh, fall prohibition out of Virginia, guys. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I'm sure man, some of the, some of the listeners, high, hopefully. Dude. I hijacked at that time. Sorry. Thank you, dude. Me and Grandpa are <laughs> hanging time. out here, man. Dude, I got so excited because I got to grow now. I was just like, oh, my God. You guys. No, it's... Yeah. it's it's good grow talk. I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's just funny sometimes how the <laughs> how the how the talking stick and the weed and the flow goes. I'll bring it back to Virginia because I do want to know. I'll take the first comment here. Your friendly neighborhood grower says the governor is trying to stop the implementation of rec market by withholding funding. A lot of people are talking trash on the governor in these comments. Currently, only four companies, one per region. Virginia isn't that big, can legally grow, supply the medical market. The current medical dispensaries have mids for flour and are way overpriced. With that said, the streets are on fire. Ah, uh, love it. That's the way it's it like, should be. I mean, it's nice. There's plenty of people that are either intimidated or won't go buy from anybody, but like a Walgreens or dispensary type setting because they feel like they're breaking the law or they're not whatever, but you know. I don't like overpriced. Oh, this is mids. great. We're watching your uh, Instagram video, dude. This is amazing. Uh, Sorry, man. We're still on Instagram. It looks so it's, high. Well, it's, it's such a cinematic shot. It's raining. You're high. Green plants, purple plants. <laughs> wow. Dude, your Instagram's all right, yeah. man. Look, you're changing. Uh, I am changing. The is dude, this the, is Uncle, this Jim, the... Uncle Jim says, nice shack, dude. Shit. Shout out to Uncle Jim. At Michael Cisco said, How did your protest go? Is your mountain bike <laughs> trail still there? Oh, yeah. Nice plan. Talk about it. We got comments from coming Colorado. Out. <laughs> These guys are testing my patience, DGC. I'm going to take it back to Virginia Cough Factory. <laughs> That's <laughs> look how high. Look how high. I do look high in that. I love it. <laughs> I've been growing in Virginia since 1998. Always been shitty brickweed around here, unless you knew a grower. I was risking five to 30 mandatory minimum for legalization. Now I'm watching the DGC learning great new techniques. I'm growing the best flower around. And in my opinion, my friends light up the black market weed. And it's nothing like what I grow. They're paying a little less now, but still too expensive. I give any extra weed I have away to my buddies. Medical is not bad if you buy the right stuff, but it's still 50 and eight total ripoff need to get their heads out of their asses in Virginia and start opening rec dispos for the general public. 
Damn. that don't grow. And as always, a DGC effing it rocks. All right, <laughs> all in Virginia Cough Factory. Nice. Very cool. $50 I'm just looking... an eighth. Can you wrap your head around that? Oh, oh man. Just I'm... looking for cannabis mandatory minimums. I don't know. Yeah, right? I had it for a second until the pop-up came. Oh, no, but normal, normal has the most, the best, in, but it's been up there. Yeah. I'll give you one more from Tark. 214.13, Tark 214. 214.13 says, somebody try to talk quicker than you can with caffeine and cannabis. Love it. it says, we have medical and rec. It had a rec going. Although rec is not open yet. There we go. The medical dispensaries are a joke. We do have home grow, and that's where the fire is. Dispos prices are a bigger joke wow. but the gray market still thrives so it sounds like since people know they're not facing as much trouble or mandatory minimums for home grow that's open and that since they're not allowing rec yet those guys are capitalizing on that man ram growing some fire and bringing it out to the gray market or whatever you want to call it uh, which i'm fine with uh, and also promoting hey the home grows where the fire is and that's what we're about so if you are in a state where you're allowed to grow make sure you set up a home grow and get after a little bit it's affordable these days yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Dude, I'm looking at the cultivation laws is from normal. They weren't lying about five to 30 years. It's five to 40 years for 100 to 999 plants. And then a thousand plants or more is 10 years to life. That is, think about that Dutch table method we were talking about. Right. <laughs> yeah, 100 plants on a table. Yes, we're not doing that. That's why we grew trees, 99 trees, allegedly, back in the day. I love that song. 99 the one trees. thing, though, just quickly, <laughs> like, I need to have more plants instead of less bigger plants. So, like, if you're growing, let's say, five 20 gals instead of a bunch of five gals or three gals, at least when you have more plants, if one's become a problem or more infestated, you can remove it. Sometimes it's harder to treat bigger plants thoroughly and harder to work with, harder to move if you need to sure. move it in and out of something. So I'm a fan of more plants. Uh, so now you're asking me on IG about uh, to, I mean, did, did the mountain bike trail saved because last week you guys held down uh, <laughs> I believe the, Saturday sh the Saturday show and said I was chaining myself to a tree. We might have exaggerated uh, a little bit. It's a show. We play characters here, all right, dude? But you did go to a protest. Yeah. You called up and said, hey, they're pulling our mountain bike trail down, and I want to go see what, what the heck is up here. Yeah, yeah, I totally well, it happened. We were, got word quick on our writing group on Signal. What I use Signal for on that, I don't know. And they're like, we use Signal to talk. I'm like, cool, I'll use it. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> encrypted, the buddies encrypted bike group. What Jesus. the hell are you guys up to, dude? You're texting? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, texting. we literally showed up with uh, three of us or so and, you know, gave our peace of mind in a kind way to the guys that were destroying it. And of course, they use the excuse that most people do in those positions. I'm just doing my job, just doing what I'm told. It's like, yeah, but what? Okay. Anyway, but no. I'll summarize it. Yeah. You're really going to pick on, hang on. You're really going to pick on the bulldozer operator out of all the, the different people <laughs> that were responsible no, for that. I didn't, I didn't, we didn't pick on them at all, you know, and we got the number of their supervisor while we were there. We actually ended up getting the person that made the decision to do this on the phone yeah, while yeah. we were there. So we did make a difference. They stopped doing any trail damage from that point further. Now what? we're in the process of getting things reviewed, which is even much more major pain in their ass. <laughs> like, Dude, oh, so how long how, how long does it take to get a trail sanctioned with the city? You're like, well, at least two years before you can. I'm like, okay. Now you see why we do stuff without asking. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. In America, it just doesn't make a difference, man. So I'm, I'm surprised. Very interesting. <laughs> dude fought the law, the storm. and the dude won. Did you tell me the dude, was, man? Yeah, it worked. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. no. I'm the dude. Storm Boy asked, so does the dude still need bail money or bolt cutters? I did for a minute, though, think about being like, look, guys, I'm just going to stand here. And <laughs> for, but it's like, no, how much time do you have in a day? The, dude, you're here. We got the ball rolling. So next game. He's like, he is square. Man, he's like, we could scoop you up in a bulldozer, man. You know? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> TM, uh, dude. Joshua S. says, put some vanilla extract in the oven and bake it. Your house will smell like you're inside of the Pillsbury Doughboys Poland. 
Yeah. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> a little twist at the end there. Uh, farting out them little delicious nuggets, man. Um, so that yeah, was that, for that, when your carbon filter fails or if you get put in a pinch. Yes. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll cover for you, dude. I'll cover for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's straight gutta. For emergency crop smell cover-up, I use fabric softener sheets behind a box fan. Mm. In minutes, your home smells good. <sighs> to cover smoke like smell, it. I crumble up six sheets of fabric softener inside a paper towel and blow smoke through the homemade filter. Your house will smell laundry S- flesh. And fresh. we... And <laughs> we... Yeah. What is we it? all the sploof, did that. right? The sploof. Yeah, we all did. Come on, Come man. On. That's a little old school there, yeah. but I appreciate it. I, I would always poke bit. holes into a, like a, a bottle and fill them. And then you would have like a really, really like clean portable one. You ever exhale into the freezer? Yeah, I did, worked in restaurants. Yeah, right. <laughs> <I don't laughs> yeah. In freezers. Man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, this is a little grow talk. We were talking about ways yeah. to get rid of smell. We were talking about ozone. And ozone's a good way to get rid of, rid of smell, but it's bad for you. It's an oxidizer. And so it's, uh, Jerry, I'm sorry, Jeremy Stanley says, I read osium isn't good when flowering. It messes with VOCs in the plant. I don't know about osium, but ozone itself, yeah, you do not want an ozone generator yeah, flowering room. It's an oxidizer. It's putting that O3 down there, and just like bleach, it's cleaning. And you don't want to be doing that to your leaves, man. No, nor osium either. Osium's old school. That's like you're talking about the spray, the tire release thing that could be on the wall that's supposed to be like in a men's room yeah. in a commercial setting. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah. don't mess with unless you're like in idea. outside areas, <laughs> hallways, or something outside of the grove. But still, there's better options. Those draw it. so much attention when it's when quiet, it. and you just hear this Rambo. <laughs> Oh, dude, the first house I got, I was growing in, and my mom came over to see it, and it was so awkward, because you could tell I was growing in it, and she's sitting on the couch, we're kind of looking at each other awkwardly, and the osium thing goes, and it just, everybody goes, whomp. Yeah. Oh, I've yeah. had a similar situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? It's so loud when it's quiet. It makes a little gear sound. Yeah. <laughs> Think of the times I would just, and one time I just got a note. It said, you can fool some of the people sometime, but you can't fool mom. And I'm like, what do you know about now? What sliver do you know about? <laughs> That's deep. Your mom's a gangster. Holy crap. Yeah, some pretty social gangster, right? <laughs> media to laugh at here. I'll remind people to comment, like, subscribe, please. If you're still hanging with us, had a good time. You laughed. We entertained your time. Comment, like, subscribe, help grow the channel. And Scotty... Let's. I asked him like, how do you uh, find the uh, this? Not. I just can't find the same material on Facebook. You got to go to my Facebook, and I'm scared to do that. Though. Like, how does it gonna affect mine? I don't really use Facebook much, but this stuff's good. It'll mess with the algorithm, Grambo. Just this is the weirdest thing. I saw this thing that came into my feed: how to cut a pizza into seven slices. <laughs> and I'll make pizza a lot, and I'll be like, oh, that's pretty interesting. You got seven people, seven slices. So that's weird looking. What's happening? Yeah. I don't know how they did that, man. So here, go get just scroll down, all right? Make seven unequal slices with three cuts. Just, it's just, is that what you would think? Uh, <laughs> go keep going. Well, it that's gets, un- unequal. It gets weirder, man. Like, it just, they start, they, like, ways you would never imagine the most inequitable. <laughs> That pizza doesn't look very good either. I like the big slice method, man, where you just rip everybody else off. The first guy, they're, they're messing with us now, right? I'm liking what's happening here. Oh this God. is actually, this is a fascinating one. Well, they ruined it at the end, but still. What is it happening here? I just, this is what I thought, man. I thought they'd give me like some kind of a rule or something to make seven slices. Well, making any uneven oh, amount of God. slices, making f- five, seven, any uneven is a tough proposition, you know, that, that Grambo. equilateral. You go on a date with this girl and she's perfect and then you go to make pizzas and she has a cutting guide, man. What do you do? Fuck it. Put a ring on it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's make a cutting guide first. I, I went on a date mm-hmm. with a girl who told me her favorite thing was to meal prep, and I was like, I love you. No, uh Yeah, I don't know how to meal prep. I don't need someone that's good at video. I need someone that's good at 
things that I'm not good at. It's true, man. You don't want to find someone just like you, bro. Do you even meal prep? I don't. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to meal prep shame you, man. <laughs> Uber? Is Uber Eats meal prep? Oh, man. Hey, dude, they keep on giving me these, by the way. Are we going to get one or not? Grandpa, you want to get one of these with me? Homebiogas.com. <laughs> I was thinking about it, yes. man. I could I could run my barbecue with it. Oh my god. <laughs> Your poobicue. <laughs> poobicue. The poobicue. Oh uh, no. <laughs> Let's tell people next barbecue. We're gonna have a, a couple friends over this weekend that we're using the composting toilet. This to is make. so far off the beaten path, you they wouldn't even understand. You're right. <laughs> I need to, to really do to this, them. man. The troll on this is actually really doing it, right? Oh my it comes with a propane stove. This is preposterous. Grambo. <sighs> Where's my roofle? Oh, it's uh right it's right on that thing right there on the book. Yeah. <laughs> I was buying gifts for the puppies, you know, shopping a little bit high. I did oh. wait till I got to the grocery store and <laughs> incredibly baked. You want to show it the clone cam? Works. Good plan. The roofal, man. I found a roofal. <laughs> I had to buy it. I get it. It's a roofy waffle, man. Oh my you know? God. I don't know. I haven't looked at the ingredients. Roofal. Like, Weird. people don't care. You got Joy Yank. They're not American. I get it, but... Come on, nobody was a friend of them and said, hey, look, Rufal, you might have a branding issue. I mean, if you just do that, if you just do that, <laughs> what the, come on. Uh, anyway, I like that they're making maple flavored Rufals. I almost opened it and took a bite. Just, it looks delicious. I was about to say, be careful. Late at night, maybe you're oh. really high, maybe you had a few drinks and you want a midnight snack and next thing you're eating a Rufal. Oh, oh yeah, God. Google this, man. No, Google. Right. I Googled dogs on Rufals. What'd you get, Grandpa? Oh, man. Dog's on roof. Look at that. Oh, my God. He is so roofled He's up, He's roofled. This guy. Oh, oh dude. We've you see all, that? We've all been there. Like, I can only remember doing that, man. I mean, I this, remember that, being in your house. This is Scott last night. Yeah, but, man. That was you roofing. That was up. me. I seen it. <laughs> it was me in line at the Sizzler. Uh, or Sizzler. Yeah. Roofled up, brother. <laughs> Those Sizzlers. And then, dude. They make a whole setup here, man. After about two hours of the roofal, want to light yourself up one of these, man? Which <laughs> that looks like you can smoke it. Right? I don't it, know. Either smoke it or toot it. I think it's the a, other. It's man. a dog oney. <laughs> toot toot. <laughs> this is for this is for dude, mini dude, and doggy dude. Wow. They party at Red Red Barn Farms, man. Hell yeah! Shout out. <laughs> You're so, reminding me since you said Sizzler. Who's a uh, Happy Gilmore's opponent that? It's ass Shooter McGavern. Shooter, Shooter, sorry, Shooter. Shooter, yes. <laughs> and as the guy he pays to, to bribe and do bad things wants to meet him at the Sizzler. Sorry, fond memories. Oh, yes. happy Gilmore. It's all you can eat steak, seafood, and salad. Surf and turf? I That's not what surf and turf means. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm a Philistine. I will tell you the best depiction of what heaven is is in the movie Happy Gilmore. We don't have to say exactly <laughs> what all the attributes were, but it is. Sorry. Uh, so let's, uh, say that I hope you guys had a good time today. Dudegrows.com forward slash support is the backbone of the show. Thank you, DTC producers. Thank you, Scotty Grambo on the boards. And, uh, last Saturday, man, the Saturday shows have been fun. If you guys haven't checked them out, go check out this last Saturday show. It was, did High C hang? It was you, High C Banner? Uh, Banner. It's just me and Banner hanging, man. Yeah. You know, excellent, man. Check out the they're a fun vibe. A little bit different than our, our during the week shows. So see what happens when dude's not hanging. <laughs> yeah, it gets real off track. It got real off track without you, dude, I will say. Excellent. Gotta do that sometime. Stay higher, everybody. DGC, peace out. Until next time, we'll be coming at you. Hey, take her easy, dude. Grambo, slice that pizza. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> <laughs>